So this is the most exciting part of our program tonight, and that is um, the uh, award of um, a bunch, or the recognition of a, a, a bunch of amazing individuals that have made a huge difference in our prairie community the past couple of years. Um, so without further ado, Beth. Bye. Oh. <laughs> See, we're doing double duty too. <laughs> it's nice to have somebody to pawn your stuff off on, right? <laughs> I don't mean anything by that. <laughs> it doesn't go down that far. Ooh, how's that? <laughs> okay. Um, now, H Impact starting last year. Um, we started presenting a Prairie Volunteer Award. And one of the reasons is HMPAT is run by volunteers and we want to honor all the volunteers that um, help out and are very important for the Prairie. And this year's award winner is Jim Durant. Um, Jim, yeah. Um, Uh, he was earned this award is because of all the activities that prairie activities that he is involved in. He's been a longtime prairie volunteer, and he's involved with multiple uh, organizations. Now, Jim's volunteerism started in 2007 with Prairie Friday Group at Armand Bayou Nature Center, and there from 20. 14 to present, he has led all aspects related to plant generation at Armand Bayou. Um, he was also involved in restoration at Sheldon Lake State Park on the Tuesday mornings from 2007 to 2010. Then in 2010, he uh, transferred to the Texas City Prairie Preserve uh, where he um, has led the work uh, Tuesday work days from uh, then to July of this year and uh, he has also produced plants for their restoration during this period so um, he still continues to volunteer over there although he's not leading the uh, work day. Jim has also been involved in the prairie restoration at San Jacinto Battleground since 2012 um, and from 2014 to present, as he leads the plant production effort there as well, and that's on Thursday morning. So in summary, from 2007 to um, 2012, he has volunteered at work days on Tuesday and Friday. And then from 2012 to present, he volunteers for work days on Tuesdays, Fridays, and um, Tuesdays, Thursday, and Friday mornings. In addition to that, there's an addition, but there is an addition. Oops, oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, in addition to that, he um, is um, involved in all aspects of plant generation. And in his words, he says, plant generation, the generation of plants that support the restoration effort is a very time consuming task. The effort begins with the collecting, cleaning, and storing to seed, which he does. Um, and then the seeds are germinated in several greenhouses <laughs> a, a, around the supporting areas. And he, one of the greenhouses, the uh, College of the Mainland greenhouse that he used. So he germinates the seeds um, that all those um, volunteers propagate. And since 2014, he has generated over 170,000 seedlings in support of restoration activities at different sites. And after the seedlings are generated, they're taken uh, from the greenhouse to the restoration where they are placed in one gallon pots by the volunteer groups. They are then staged and uh, are ready to plant in the prairie, which he organizes and the um, potting and staging. And then for each planting event, and he identifies the individual uh, plant types that will be planted. So he's involved in all aspects of restoration from seeds to plants to planting. And I think 
um, uh, he really deserves this award. <laughs> actually gives two awards every year. Um, this particular award is, is a really awesome award because um, the Prairie community votes on it. So you probably all saw the email that came out. Um, we have a lot of amazing individuals. Everyone that was on our, on our list for the vote this year is of course very, very deserving. Um, but Stephen Benino um, came out up, up top. Um, so uh, Stephen is a pretty amazing guy. Um, he is the Environmental Quality Section Leader for the Harris County Flood Control District Environmental Services Department. I'm glad you guys have an acronym. Um, he manages stormwater quality and revegetation programs, including water quality monitoring, native habitat restoration, endangered species monitoring, and biostabilization projects, and also conducts research to further uh, understand the intersection of natural ecosystems within flood reduction projects. Prior to joining the district, thank you for not writing the whole name out again, um, he was awarded a PhD in restoration ecology from the University of Western Australia, and he holds a Bachelor of Science degree in ecology and plant biology from the University of Texas at Austin. Um, I really have leaned on Stephen a lot the past couple of years because I don't know anything about soil. And so I don't know how many times I've asked you, what does infiltration rate mean? I think probably about a million times, but he always smiles, he's always kind, he never tells me, I already told you that a million times. <laughs> um, he volunteers his time uh, to help with everybody else's project. And so I'm really, really pleased to be able to present uh, the 2019, uh, you know, sorry, I cannot say without looking at it, but WA Upper Texas Coast Award to Stephen Benino. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's not creepy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that we decided uh, early on with the Coast Parade Partnership is that we'd serve five functions. Um, one of those functions was to convene people to, to get a better collective impact for the whole Prairie community. And there were others, but one is being a cheerleader. I know that there are many of you, if this describes you, uh, tell me, you've been by yourself, you've been nicked, you're full of dirt, you've been mosquito bitten, you're tired, and you wonder, why am I doing this? <laughs> right? I think we've all been there. And that's why these awards mean something, because there's not always everybody there to catch you doing something good. A lot of times this work is very isolating. It's done alone. It's done on your extra hours. And that's why awards mean something, because we can daylight what we all know to be true. The Prairie Champions in this room and the Ecology Champions in this room are working very hard, but they're not always getting the spotlight they deserve. So Jim and Steven, you guys represent the best of the Prairie community. I'm glad that you guys are doing that. Also, uh, you know, um, everybody else is going to get an award today, just amazing people. But let me tell you about this guy. It is my great pleasure to tell you about my friend Bill Neiman. Um, and I'm going to read this bio, and I'm going to tell you the real Bill. About the real Bill. So Bill Neiman started his first company in 1974 when he was 19. He borrowed a shovel, a rake, a lawnmower, and advertising and advertised offering total outdoor care. After 15 years in the landscape and nursery business, Native American Seed was formed. Today, he continues to specialize in the harvest and sale of seed produced entirely from native plants. Bill is a leader in the movement to conserve natural resources to restore and maintain the health of the environment, including pollinators and all native wildlife. He is passionate about preserving night skies, has been living on solar-powered rainwater collection in a system built on his farm in 2012. So here's, here's which, which, uh, which you should all know about Bill. You all already know Bill. Because if you've tried to restore a prairie here in Houston, it's very likely that you use Native American seed. All these pocket prairies that have bloomed 
across the state now. They're at UT and about to be at UHCL and U of H and U of H downtown and Rice and the Medical Center and Sheldon Lake and on and on and on and on. And if you've ever driven on a highway here in Texas during the blue bonnet season, if you've ever visited the George Bush Library, if you've ever gone across the state and seen beauty reinfused into our precious state, it's very likely that that beauty started in Junction, Texas with Bill and his amazing team at Native American Seed. This man travels the state relentlessly on a mission to save, restore, and shout the values of prairies. And so uh, I will tell you that I just planted the Patton Spring Prairie, my front yard prairie, all with Native American Seed. And I'm just not a plug, I'm not giving you anything. But let me tell you something, when the little kids come to my yard and they want to hang out there and watch what we call BTV because of that man right there, right? So his work and his passion is literally blooming across the state. And it's for that reason that we are excited to bestow upon Bill Naiman and get him to come up and say some words, which I'm sure it's a hard thing to do next week. The Flo Hanna Prairie Excellence Award. This is not voted on by the prairie community, but rather by a group of prairie experts who recognize the value of a career of achievement, not just a few years of achievement, but a career. And Bill has certainly exemplified that. All of Texas is very grateful to you, Bill, and Native American Seed for what you've done, and your life's work will live on because of the people in this room and the generations to come. So please come and let me hand you this thing. true I was thinking uh, when Jim got up and that someone was saying all of the things that he was worked had worked on Thursday he was at Sheldon and, uh, Saturday the San Jacinto Battleground I was like man what did I do to that guy <laughs> all of those places like Jaime said we got them kicked off one way or another we, we kind of put a foundation to get it started, and then all these other things happen, particularly y'all. I tried to uh, uh, think about this thing about borrowing a shovel and a rake and a lawnmower, and it is true. And I got started when I was 19, but uh, after about, well, it was really about 18 years, I figured out I was part of the problem. And I thought my mission was to clean up behind the bulldozers. And so I, we end, I ended up, I mentioned Dallas earlier, but the year after they killed Kennedy, my dad got laid off because we didn't have a war with Russia. And he was building aircraft at Grand Prairie for Lane Timco Vault. So there was not a reason to blow up a bunch of fighter aircraft, so he got laid off and he got hired back on out at White Sands Missile Range. So I, we moved to El Paso. So talk about a neurotic growing up <laughs> and the thing about being anti-Houston, but uh, my mom just loved Dallas and I did actually, I learned after I got older that I was on the Blackland Prairie and there was still prairie like within striking distance of my yard. And, uh, but then to get out to the Chihuahua Desert. And somehow I came back to the Dallas area to clean up behind the bulldozers during the Sunbelt bloom <coughs> when the price of gas went from 26 cents a gallon to 58 cents and we thought we were gonna die. <laughs> you might recall, some of us do. But uh, I went back and kind of got situated. Uh, somehow I ended up in Flower Mound, Texas. And uh, that's where my dad brought me the first time I ever went rabbit hunting with a double barrel 410 shotgun. It was on the north shores of Grapevine Lake, which is now the town of Flower Mound. 100,000 people are there now. But 
this sunbelt bloom thing was kind of uh, uh, messing with the places where my hunting grounds were when I was a kid. And so I thought I was going to clean up behind this. And the uh, worst drought came along. It was 100 days of 100 degrees. This is in 1980, the summer of 80, with no rain. <coughs> And so all these uh, beautiful landscapes that I was doing, I was a licensed irrigator. I had a hydromulch machine. I would buy uh, diesel truckloads of St. Augustine sod or Bermuda grass. And we did the entire job. This total outdoor care turned into doing the entire job. Dirt work, retaining walls, drainage, lighting, hardscapes, water features. And the plants were like the icing on the cake. But Asian jasmine, Chinese holly, India hawthorn, Japanese boxwood, <laughs> Caribbean St. Augustine, you know, I figured it out in this drought. Uh, the customers were calling me, some of these ladies were crying, they had spent a fortune, and there was water bands, and they, they, their landscapes were dying. And so really, I figured it out, and my wife and I were we're contemplating getting married, and I don't know why, but I was envisioning children. <laughs> even though I, I'm pretty fearful for the future for young people, and uh, sometimes I have nightmares about that, of what's going to happen. But uh, I was like, man, the young people in the future would have the right to slit our throats if they knew that we were using up the clean drinking water for no other reason than to keep up with the Joneses. 80% of the clean drinking water in Texas goes on watering landscapes. That is just absolutely disgusting. And I decided to just shift everything right there. And I realized on my way home from the nursery, I've shifted everything, uh, uh, you know, over time, but I was seeing plants that were green and blooming on my ride home back out to Argyle, which is the next town out past Flower Mound. And I'd get out and go over across the barbed wire fence in these pastures, and there I learned the names. These were native plants that were doing fine during this drought with nobody to water them. And so that's what made my thing click. And uh, it's really all about water, the basis of all life. But Anybody that gets focused in this line of work can easily see that the plants is what holds the whole world together. It's what everything is revolving around the plants. And there's this incredible crash occurring down on the lower tropic levels uh, in the insect world. The insects are so specialized. This whole thing, we've got it down. We've got to drill down on the monarch butterflies, how specific that is. They can't move over and lay their eggs on Asian jasmine. They have to have milkweeds. Well, almost all of the insects are like that. So they enter into these urban areas, which are significant now. Dallas is a 100-mile diameter city. And the, all of these zoning rules that won't even allow native plants. They're not even on the plant list, on the uh, ordinances and the building codes. There is so much work to be done on the most basic, fundamental level. And meanwhile, we've got little kids, 15 years old, with all, uh, autism that are figured out there's no reason even to go to school if there's not going to be a future. The school striker of uh, Greta Thunberg. I, I think that we are all a part of her. We are all somebody's grandkids. And many of us have our own grandkids. And it is true, the house is on fire. This is kind of the last call. And this work that we are all engaged in is a very critical part of it. Thank you very much. Okay, I have just a few other talk. 
<laughs> uh, awards that I want to give out, and um, I don't have any pictures, so this is going to be really quick. Uh, but we're coming, uh, the Native Prairie Association is coming up on its 10th year in Houston, and the Houston chapter was the first chapter that we ever established. And uh, it's probably been one of the uh, more challenging things that I wanted to take on in my life, but it's been real rewarding. And the reason why is because of all the people that have been involved in it over the years. They've been absolutely fantastic. And they've been a model, literally, for all the other chapters that we've been able to establish. I'm not sure we would have been able to spread out into the state and to all the major cities like we have without the example that they've given us. So I wanted tonight to uh, be able to honor the uh, four current officers. Uh, only two of them were able to be here. Uh, our current president, Mary Waters, is um, uh, she has been seriously ill and uh, she has not been able to uh, be here. And uh, Hazel Potman is uh, the treasurer and uh, she had some family obligations. But two of them are here, and so I want to give an award uh, to these ladies because they have been involved in uh, our chapter for years, uh, not just the last few years, but literally almost from the beginning. And um, I, I'm, I just don't know how to thank them enough, and I wanted to make sure that they were honored and that they know that we appreciate them. So uh, if uh, Beth Clark would come up, she's kind of taken the place while well, Mary's not been able to as president, but she's also vice president. Could you, like, can I see oh. the, thank you. Oh. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> and the other officer that's here is Kelly Shield. And uh, Kelly was brave enough Yes. <laughs> Kelly was brave enough to volunteer to be the third president that we had. She followed in Lance's shoes, which are hard shoes to fill, and uh, she took that on and did it very successfully, and she's also an officer now, so I want to uh, thank Kelly for all the years that she has stuck by us. Can I add something? Okay. Kelly, Kelly also did this while she was still an undergraduate yes. student at the University of St. Paul. Yes. So. <laughs> because this person has to be thanked and you will all know why when I tell you who it is. And um, when I first met her, um, she was the most enthusiastic person I'd ever met in my life. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, we need, we need to get her involved. We, we want her on our team. And she has been. And she's been fantastic. And I can't thank her enough for all that she's done. Um, with the uh, North American Prairie Conference, she made it rock. And uh, so I want to give this award. It's called the uh, Prairie Conservation Award from NPAT for conservation work in prairie, prairie conservation. And it goes to Cassidy Johnson. Oh, no. <laughs>